talking about God five weeks now or something like that. And so God has a name. And the importance of a name is because it gives, it shows his character and his authority. And that name also has brings to mind an image. And then as we since we don't know and won't know what God looks like until we see him face to face in the vision, the image that we that brings you should bring to mind for us would be the image that we see on the veil of Veronica or the shroud. But an image, Christ's face, on your face is reflected all the emotions that you feel. Jealousy, anger, hatred, arrogance. All, all the, the emotions that you yourself feel that well up in your heart are reflected upon your face. So there's also a connection then to the heart. The heart of Christ. And that's what we're going to talk about today, the sacred heart. Because again, can't talk that much about God the Father or God the Holy Ghost because we know that they exist, but we're not as personally involved with them as we are with Christ. He became a human being who had a human heart. He had a human body. He so we hate, we have an image that we can we can see, we can recognize. And he he also had a human heart and he reflected in his life, those emotions. We, see, we can see in him and throughout his life um, emotions that we have to deal with. Nothing that happens to you in your life, nothing will ever happen to you in your life that you can't look for in his. You lose a loved one? He did. He, he buried St. Joseph. He, he knows what it is to be poor. To have people hate you. He knows what it is to, to love someone intensely. He loved his mother. He loved the apostles. He loves us. He, anything that could possibly happen to you in your life, you don't have to go far to find an example in his life. And so, as I say, the name brings to mind the face, and the face shows the feelings of the heart. And, um, and, in, and the, if you look at his face on the shroud or on the veil of Veronica, the face is, what emotions do you see there? You don't see hatred. You don't see uh, anger. You don't see a desire for revenge. You see peace. You see resignation. You probably, if you, you, you may even see sadness. Not so much on this one. They hear he's dead. Look at the face of Veronica. On that face, you, you may even see the sadness. He's crying. You look closely, you'll see tears. Um, why is he crying? For himself? No. He's crying for us. Our, our Lord wept a number of times in his life, in the Gospels. One was at the death of, death of Lazarus. He loved Lazarus. Uh, and yes, he did feel the death of Lazarus, just as you would feel the death of someone you loved. Though he knew that he was going to raise him from the dead, it wasn't over Lazarus that he wept, because he knew he was going to raise him from the dead. He wept with compassion because Mary and Martha were in agony over their brother's death. He felt their compassion. He felt their sorrow. And he shared it. And so then he raised him from the dead. Though he had intended to do it from the very beginning. He postponed his going. When they, they sent for him, he postponed going for, for a number of days so that Lazarus would die. If he had gone right away, Lazarus would not have been dead. He waited until after Lazarus died to go because he, 
needed to raise him from the dead. It was the great miracle that actually drove the scribes of the Pharisees to, to put him to death. So, another time that he wept was over the city of Jerusalem. He stood on the mountaintop looking down over the city, and he wept. Why did he weep? Because he knew in advance what was going to happen to that city. If you read in the, any history, you'll see, you'll, you can read about what happened to that city not long after his death. He died about, what, the year 30, 33? And the city of Jerusalem was destroyed in 64, 30 years after he died. And it was destroyed in a terrible way. The Roman army came down and surrounded it. It starved it. And when they finally got in, they totally destroyed it. They tore down the temple. There were so many people crucified that they ran out of wood, cut down every tree. They crucified them, all the people who had resisted them, all of those who were soldiers. And the women and children, they led off this into slavery. Our Lord wept because he knew this was going to happen to the city, a city that he loved, and the people that he loved. So all his emotions you, he's, you see re are reflected in your, in your face. And our Lord invites him to, to love him. In, the, in, the, in one of the things that he said is, learn of me, for I am meek and humble of heart. He wants us to look at his heart. Even then, again, remember, God made us to love him. He, he, he made us to know, love, and serve him. God wants us to love him. He needs for us to love him. If he needs anything, that's what he wants. Everything that has ever happened in the world has happened because of that because he wants us to love him, and we don't. And he constantly tries to bring us back. He warned about the destruction of Jerusalem. He told them way in advance about what was going to happen. It didn't change anything. He constantly warns us, and it doesn't change anything. So his heart is an, is an important part. And most of us have, have some kind of devotion to the Sacred Heart. Why? Because the heart symbolizes love. It's a universal symbol. And we want to be loved, just as our Lord wants to be loved. Pius XII wrote a beautiful encyclical about the Sacred Heart. And I'm going to just paraphrase some parts of it. it was, it's very long, but it's very beautiful. He, Pius X says that the love of Christ is threefold. It actually has three loves. And if you think about it, that makes sense. The, the first love, first love is his divine love. He's God. His divine love is the love that he has for the Holy, for the Father and the Holy Ghost. Just that, that love that they all share between themselves. It's a very special love, a love that we can't even understand. That's his divine love. He also took on a human nature, so he also has a human love. This is the love that prompted him in all of his actions in his life. This is what prompted him to weep over Jerusalem, to give his life for us, to, to try and save us, to found a church. This, this human love prompted all of his actions. It's what guided his will, his human will, as a human being on earth. But, and the third love, you could probably say is a symbol. It's the symbol of his love for us. His human love prompted him to come and die for us, but he still loves us, even now. It's this, 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 his heart now we can look at. It's no longer 
his his human his human heart now is in heaven. Re, with his connected again um, because he died at the moment of his death. There was a separation of his his soul from his body, but it was reunited at his resurrection. So body and soul, he is now in heaven together. His human heart is, is in heaven, but he, we still have that love. That human heart is no longer guiding his the actions of his, his human body because his human body is in heaven, united to with his divinity, which it always was, but now they're, they're both together in heaven. Uh, but he still has that that love for us, and we can look at that at his heart as the symbol of all the, the immensity of the love that he has for us. So when we have devotion to the Sacred Heart, this is what this is the love that we're talking about. This third love, the love that he has for us and we have for him. He talked about. Um, he talked to, when he came to St. Margaret Mary, he, he talked to, wait a minute, I don't want to skip everything. The, the Pope said one more thing. Um, he said that we should contemplate and honor the Sacred Heart of the Divine Redeemer as a symbolic image of his love and a witness of our redemption. And at the same time as a sort of mystical ladder to help us to mount to heaven and to embrace God. Think of St. John leaning on our Lord's heart and imagine you in St. John's place. You should be constantly striving for that, striving to be united with, with the love of Christ. And everything, that, and the Pope went on to say that everything that our Lord, that he did, our Lord did, for example, the institution of the Blessed Sacrament, um, the, the giving St. John and to us the Blessed Mother, instituting the Church, everything that our Lord did was out of love for us. Um, and, and, and so we, and if, when you think about that, and you, you come back to the, this idea again that a name brings to mind an image, and the image shows all the feelings of the heart. The, and, it, and one of the things that that heart felt was such a great love for us that he didn't want to be separated. And for that reason, he instituted the Blessed Sacrament. The, even though the, the name and the image of the heart are combined, they represent a person. The Blessed Sacrament is that person. Our Lord said that he is the vine and we are the branches. We are united mystically with him. But the Blessed Sacrament is a physical unity that we can have with him. Just as we are connected to him mystically through the through the through the church. He's the head of the church. We are connected to the church. We're part of his mystical body. In the Blessed Sacrament, we are part of his we become part with his united with his physical body. Because the Blessed Sacrament is truly the person, the heart, the image. And when you look at the, 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 the host, when the priest raises it up, or the chalice, when he raises it up for, for your veneration at the consecration, you should be seeing our Lord's face in that, in that host. Maybe this face, or the other face, or any face you want to put to it, that is God. That is our Lord, physically present in the Blessed Sacrament. Every Mass is the sacrifice of Calvary. We'll go over this when we go get, finally get to the Mass. 
which at the rate we're going could be next year, who knows. But anyway, we will ultimately go over this, but every Mass is the sacrifice of Calvary. In every single Mass, Christ dies again, mystically. He died once on Calvary. You only had to do it once. But in every Mass, he can, because he is God, he can do it mystically over again. In every Mass, that's why there are two consecrations. The separating of the body from the blood is a death. And in, those, in the acts of consecration, our Lord dies again. Uh, so, anyway... The, that when you look at the host, you should be seeing your suffering Savior. You should be uniting yourself with him. You should be telling him how much you love him. Um, love, when you love someone, you're, and you, you, your heart wants to speak to their heart, you have to do it face to face. Um, and so, God, we know that God loves us, and we should be loving God. But, unfortunately, we don't. The world has not, that's why this is important, the world doesn't love God. And unfortunately, there's a lot of Catholics, and there's a lot of traditional Catholics that don't love him. They go through the motions. They don't really love him. And it's because of that indifference, our Lord called it his woundedness. He appeared to St. Margaret Mary Alacoque in the 17th century. Now, devotion to the Sacred Heart has been around for a long, long time. Just as devotion to the Holy Name and devotion to the Holy Face have been around since our Lord's our Lord walk the earth. I mean, you have St. Gertrude and St. Mathilde and St. Uh, talking about love of the Sacred Heart. Where you also have St. Ambrose and St. Augustine and St. Gertrude and St. Mathilde talking about devotion to the Holy Face. So they've all been around for a while. Um, and all of them, if you really think about it, they're all connected. Can you see the connection? They're all connected. And the Blessed Sacrament you can throw in there too. And devotion to the precious blood. All of it, they're all connected. But again, our Lord loves us. And everything that he did in the life and everything that has happened to the world is because he loves us. And he's constantly trying to bring us to our senses. Trying to bring us to love him. And this lack of, on, of love on our part, this indifference and the sin, are hurtful to him. And so in the 17th century, he appeared to St. Margaret Mary Alco. And he told her about the, how much he loved us. And emphasized his woundedness caused by man's indifference to his love. I love you, but you don't love me. And, you know, it goes back to, the, you know, Satan... I will not serve. We don't want to serve. We very much repeat the same words that he that Lucifer said. I won't serve. It's this woundedness that caused him to reveal more and more of himself to us and to call us back from the brink of destruction. Whenever our Lord comes, it's because we have reached a point where he's going to have to punish us. He's standing on the mountain looking down on Jerusalem and he's weeping. And he knows what's in, going to happen to us and he doesn't want it to happen. He wants us to change. He wants us to love him. Remember, that's the center of everything that he does. So he comes in person, in this case with St. Margaret Mary Alacoque, and to tell her about his love for the Sacred Heart. And he knows how selfish we are. So he always tries to bribe us. He always offers us something when he wants something. Because we don't
turn to him unless we're going to get something out of it. Because our, we are so selfish. Our love is primarily for ourselves before we're willing to give it to him. And so he made 12 promises to St. Mark and Mary. And I'm not going to tell you right now what they are. You'll have to wait till the very end. <laughs> so what, but what did he want? First of all, he wanted us to consecrate ourselves to him. Secondly, he wanted us to consecrate our homes to him. Thirdly, he wanted us to consecrate our countries to him. He appeared to Margaret Mary in France. It took, it took another hundred years before France finally consecrated itself to him. And it didn't happen until King Louis was in prison, about to be guillotined. A few days before he died, he consecrated France to, to the Sacred Heart. The whole terror, the whole terror could have been avoided. All the massacre of the Catholic people in France could have been avoided if it had been done sooner when our Lord wanted it. But no, he waits to the very end. It's too late now. The terror is already there. It's already killing people. But he, when he finally gets around to consecrating France to, to the Sacred Heart. Again, uh, he came, the, the, the world didn't change. Yeah, the, the, the horrors of, of the terror and Napoleon's conquest of Europe brought a lot of people back to their senses. And a lot of, again, as we talked about why bad things happen to good people, people go back to the churches. They go back to God when bad things happen. But they never stay there for very long. Again, because we're so selfish and self-centered. And so, again, in the middle of the 19th century, in the eight, eight, about 1860 something or other, uh, 1840, we were, again, on the brink of disaster. The first three commandments, the three that are the important ones, the ones that are most offend God the most, and the ones that are that we commit the most often, we it was a, it was a point where God couldn't take it anymore, and He warned us. First, He sent His mother to La Salette to warn the people exactly what was going to happen. If you don't change, if you don't stop taking my name in vain and working on Sundays, the first commandment, you know materialism and secularism and, and the you know, putting other things in God's place, yes, that too. If you don't stop doing that, this is what's going to happen. There's going to be a huge famine. The grapes will fail. The wheat will fail. And nobody listened. And there was, you have the potato famine, the wheat and grape famine in, in France. The potato famine affected mostly Ireland, Germany, the Netherlands, the countries that lived. The poor people ate potatoes. In France, they ate barley and wheat, and those crops failed. The grapes failed. There was famine throughout all of Europe. Did people learn? For a little while. But it didn't change much. So, at that, at, he, he sent his mother to La Salette. Well, he himself went to, sister, uh, to a French Carmelite in Tours, Sister Marie de Saint Pierre, or Sister Mary of Saint Peter, and he told her that he wanted devotion to his holy name and his holy face. And he made promises to her. Again, you know, that's the selfishness on our part. He won't, he does, when he approaches, he always comes bearing gifts. You do this for me, I'll bribe you. Uh, you do this for me, I'll do this for you. Um, hey, bribery works. I, with my, my sixth graders, I have, uh, 
bribery. I found that to be one of the you you can you you, you have to do offset punishment with reward. Well, bribery is the reward. You don't do it, this is what's going to happen. You do do it, this is what you're going to get. And that's what God does. You know, you don't do it, this is what's going to happen. There's going to be a famine, you're going to be starving. You do do it, this is what I'm going to give you. So, he offered it to her. And there was a, throughout, throughout a, most of, uh, a large parts of France and Italy, and uh, there was a... Um, A renewal of devotion to the holy name and to the holy face, but not enough. And so we did have the famine. Did we change? No, we got worse. So he had to come back again. This time he went to an Italian sister. I guess the French, you know, they it wasn't working. We had St. Margaret Mary Al Cope. We had Sister Mary of St. Peter. Let's try another nationality. Maybe the Italians, you know. So he went to uh, Mother Maria Farina, again, talking uh, with promises, uh, with devotion to the Holy Face. By that time, it was the, the, the picture on the shroud was available, and uh, that was the, where he was wanting pictures to, you know, not pictures, he wanted devotion to his Holy Face. Again, offering promises and rewards if we would do it. Uh, have we done it? No, but I think we're on a, we're on the, so how much longer will he wait? I don't know. I don't know. I think time's running out. I mean, look at the world around you. So be careful. You know, it's, the world today is, is even worse than it was back then. The secularism, the I won't say it's entirely worse. I mean, the, what what went on during the terror was was horrible. But now we don't have that the bloodshed, but we we certainly have a lot. We, we may get the bloodshed back. We haven't changed the other ways. We still the what prompted the terror was the was the anti the. Anti, not, and not just anti-Christian, anti-God. Everything was, was secular. It was the secularism. The Freemasonry bringing out, you know, there is no God. Every, there is, everything is, uh, they wanted to worship rationalism, you know, with human beings instead of God. Um, so to Sister Mary of St. Peter, our Lord's, uh, when he appeared to her, he said, um, our Lord transported my spirit to the road which leads to Calvary and presented to me in a very lifelike manner the pious office that Veronica re rendered to him when she wiped his face with her veil which was covered with spittings and dust and sweat and blood then the divine savior made me hear how impious men by their blasphemies renewed at the present moment the outrages inflicted at that time on his holy face. And I understood that these blasphemies which the wicked hurled against his divinity, which could not reach him, fell like spit of the Jews on the sorrowful face of our Lord, who made himself a victim for sinners. Then I was made to understand that by applying ourselves to reparation for blasphemy, we rendered to him the same service that Veronica rendered him. In proportion, said our Lord, to the care that you take to restore my face disfigured by blasphemy, I will take care of yours disfigured by sin. I will imprint my image on it, and I will make it as beautiful as when it was washed in the waters of baptism. There are men on earth who have the power of restoring the body through medicine and you know things like that. But I can, only I can restore souls to the image of God. This then is the grace that I promise to grant to whosoever will apply himself to render to my adorable face the honor and adoration that it merits. 
I seek for more Veronicas to console me and to adore my divine face, which has but few worshipers. This can be taken one step further. One can say that the holy face represents the holy trinity. Not only that the face of Christ is the second person of the blessed trinity, but that in his face all three persons are represented. The divine head represents God the Father, who is not begotten. The mouth represents God the, God the Son, the word made flesh. And the eyes represent the love, the, the reciprocal love that the Father and the Son have towards each other. There is but one light, one intelligence, and they produce only one love, and that's the Holy Ghost. Look upon the majestic head as a precious part of the holy unity of God. And it's the adorable and silent face of the Savior that blasphemers overwhelm with insults. So, again, as I said, that we didn't do enough, and so he came back to talk to Mother Maria Prina. Oh, by the way, when he was talking to her, uh, Sister St. Pierre, uh, he said, perhaps souls fear that devotion to my sacred face may diminish that to my sacred heart. In other words, oh, well, I, I love the sacred heart. I can't, I, you know, there's too many different devotions. I'm just going to, you know, concentrate on the sacred heart. They're, again, they're connected. There's, you can't really separate them. And our, that's what our Lord is saying to her. You can't. Tell them that, on the contrary, it will complete and increase devotion to my heart. Contemplating my face, souls will share my sorrows and will feel the need for love and reparation. Isn't that true devotion to my heart? Now, these are our Lord's words. The Sacred Heart of Jesus is the visible object offered to our admiration to represent his immense love in the Blessed Sacrament. Likewise, the work of reparation to the face of our Lord is this, and the, his holy name is the sensible object offered for adoration to make up for blasphemies that attack his divinity, of which he is the figure, the mirror, and the image. The holy face is the picture of the divinity outraged by the, the opprobrium of blasphemers as the sacred heart is the picture of the immense love of Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. In response to our Lord's plea, there were a lot of confraternities set up in honor of the Holy Name. And in 1898, Secundo Pia took a photograph of the Shroud of Turin, and the, as I say, the negative, this is the negative, um, you could actually see his holy face. It does, if you look at the positive, it do, you don't see it very well. Um, in 1938, despite the famine and world war that followed, and the world had changed very little. So he came to Mother Maria Prina, and this is what he said to her. I desire that my face reflect the intimate pain of my soul, so that the sorrow and the love of my heart may be more greatly honored. Who beholds me? Who consoles me? Every time someone beholds my face, I will pour out my love in their hearts through my holy face, gaining salvation for many souls. You want to save souls? You have, you have devotion to the holy face. My beloved, I renew the offering of my holy face because it is ceaselessly offered to the Eternal Father. With this offering, you will receive salvation and the sanctification of many souls. When you offer it to my priest, it will work wonders. It will work miracles. Behold my face and penetrate the depths of sorrow in my heart. Console me. Look for souls, that, for I look for souls who will suffer with me for the salvation of, war, of the world. Will no one give me the kiss of love on my face to heal the kiss of Jesus? As a result of these three apparitions and the communications to St. Margaret Mary, St. Sister Mary Peter, and Mother Prina, our Lord made specific requests, and in, in return, he also made 
specific promises. Um, so, what did he? What did he ask? And what did he promise to give you? To Sister, to Mother Mary Alcoke, again, he asked for consecration of ourselves, of our families, and of our country. Now, we can't do the country well, but we can do our own, and we can do our families. If, you want, if your family hasn't already been consecrated to the Sacred Heart, you can get Father to come and do a formal consecration of your family. When you consecrate your family to the Sacred Heart, you should put an image of the Sacred Heart somewhere in your home, where in a place of honor, and it should be treated with honor. I suggest at the same time, you also have a, an image of either one of the, the Holy Face right, with, right next to the, the image of the Sacred Heart. That should be where you say your prayers as a family. If you say your rosary together as family, that should be where you should kneel and say your prayers. Um, so, um, let me skip ahead and get to the what he actually asked. For. So, so what should you do? First of all, you should refrain from blaspheming, cursing, and using God's name in vain. Uh, I don't think that's a problem for most of you. However. It may be a habit that you've gotten into, so it's something you need to work on and get over. If you do use his name in vain, you should, and you're aware of it, you should be immediately say something like, blessed be the holy name of Jesus. Make an act of reparation if you do it yourself. If you hear someone else doing it, and that is more problem. When you hear them, take our Lord's name in vain. You should interiorly, you don't have to do it out loud, make an act of, say an ejaculation, make an act of reparation to, to make up for it. Again, you can say, blessed be the name of God, blessed be Jesus Christ, um, blessed be the holy name of Jesus, something. Similar, um, you should attend Mass on Sundays, and we will go through, we end up going through the commandments. You should attend Mass on Sundays and Holy Days of Obligation and refrain from work, business, and shopping on those days as well. Now I know some people have to work on Sundays because their job requires it. Unfortunately, you can't get out of that. But if your job doesn't require it, you should not be working on Sunday. You shouldn't be buying on Sunday. Because by buying on Sunday, you are forcing other people to work on Sunday. Nobody bought on Sunday. This would be open. Yeah. Yeah. He's off on Sundays, but work always has like problems. Like he goes there anyway to like help fix things. Okay, we're going to go look through all the commandments. So when we get to the third command, we'll get more specifically into that. If it's necessary, you have to abstain from unnecessary cerebral work on Sunday. First of all, what is cerebral work? So, um, cerebral work is the work of servants and slaves. There are some things you can do on Sunday. There are certain jobs that you can do on Sunday. Intellectual work, you can do on Sunday. So I don't know what your dad does. But if it involves the mind, he can do it. You can study on Sunday. Unfortunately, you can do homework on Sunday. That's <laughs> <laughs> intellectual. <laughs> so, um, so, but we'll get into that when we get to the third commandment. But, and again, if it's necessary, because it's your requires it, or, you know, to save, save his company from going under or whatever, that's, like you said, there's a problem. Yes, it's necessary that he can do it. Um, but we'll get in specifically on the third, when we get to the third commandment. Yeah? Like shopping, big shopping, like doing your grocery shopping. Doing your grocery shopping? Yes. You need, a, you need a gallon of milk, can you stop on the way home and pick up a gallon of milk? Yeah, that's kind of right. Yeah. Yeah, because you, you need the milk, 
or you need to pick up medicine or something, you can do that. But again, just remember that every time that you are going into a store, you are causing other people to work on Sunday. Yes, people travel on Sunday, so restaurants have to be open, hotels have to be open, um, and uh, gas stations have to be open. So there are some things that have to be open, but there are a lot of businesses that are open on Sunday that don't need to be open. Yeah. So on the on the way home from mass, you stop and they have to get gas, or you have to. That's no. Yeah. That's un, again. Is it necessary? God is not standing over you with a club, going to beat you on the head every time you do. You know. All right. So um, other things that you can do is one of the prayers that he gave to uh, Sister Mary. St. Peter is called the Golden Arrow Prayer. Um, I won't read it right now, but it's it's very easy. It's just very short, and you could could say you only, you could say it as often as you as you can. Our Lord said it's called the Golden Arrow Prayer because our Lord said it wounds him delightfully. It's like it's shooting an arrow into him, but it's it's a good feeling. Um, that's very short. Um, he also gave Mother Maria Prina a scapular. Actually, it was Our Lady who gave it to her, a scapular, which was not a really sca real scapular. It was, um, she couldn't make it into a scapular. So she made it, she asked Our Lady and Our Lady said, you can make it into a metal. So she made it into a metal. Um, this is, this is what, it's not metal. Uh, it's this one. It has a picture of the shroud on one side and the Blessed Sacrament on the other. This one is the, has the veil of Veronica on one side and then again this, the Blessed Sacrament on the other. I think it, it, both of them are medals of the Holy Face and they serve, they serve equally well. So, and there are, again, special indulgences and privileges attached to that. If you join the confraternity of the Holy Name, the Arch Confraternity, of which they, the main branch in the United States used to be in New Orleans, whether it is still or not, I don't know. Members of the confraternity get what's called the Defender Cross, which has the face of our Lord on one side with the Sacred Heart and the Immaculate Heart. Again, that connection. And um, I think it says, Begone Satan in Latin. I can't read it. In this name you will conquer. Um, is with this name Satan, Satan is conquered or something like that. Um, it's not, I could translate the Latin if I could read the Latin. Not, uh, but anyway. So keep an, uh, you should keep an image of the Holy Face, either Veronica's veil or the shroud, as well as an image of the Sacred Heart in a place of honor in your homes. Um, other things you can do is you could make the Novena to the Holy Face, which starts on Shro um, starts nine days before Shrove Tuesday, which you people know is Mardi Gras. <laughs> it ends on Mardi Gras, which also happens to be the Feast of the Holy Face. It was done, that was done on purpose. Our, our Lord asked for that. Um, to make up for all the, the horrors the, that are inflicted on him because of Mardi Gras. Uh, so the Novena starts nine days before it ends that, 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 on that day. Um, you should also consecrate your home to the Sacred Heart. Uh, another thing you can do is you can wear what's called the little sachet. And the Lord made like five promises to those who wear these. It's called a little sachet. It's called, or another name for it, it's called a little sachet, but its real name is the uh, Little Gospel of the Holy Name. And our Lord, um, inside this, is a piece of paper that has our Lord, the picture of the infant Jesus, his holy name, uh, written as IHS, which is a Christogram, or in other words, his monogram, his initials. It's the first three letters of his name in Greek. And um, and this is, he specifically said what he wanted on this paper in here. And it also has 
what's called the Gospel of the Holy Name, and that is the first, the line from Luke. Um, After eight days were accomplished, he was circumcised, and they gave him the name. They gave him the name Jesus, which was the name that the angel gave him before he was conceived. That one line. That's that's the gospel of the of the holy name. In other words, and then under that is the words. Um, I think at the name. At the name of Jesus, the devil is vanquished. Uh, and then he said that on the cover of the sachet had, oh, and there's also a piece of blessed palm. It's the blessed palm that gives this its blessing. You don't have to have it blessed by a priest. It's already blessed because the priest blessed the palm. Blessed palm is very powerful. Um, and so it contains a piece of blessed palm. That paper... And the cover has to show the, uh, the our Lord's sacred heart, his cross, and all the instruments of his passion. So um, these are very easy to make. And I, on the website where I post the religion lessons, I post how you can make these. And you can download the, the image to make the cover and the papers inside. And those of you who are sewing impaired, I have some extras. <laughs> But if you so if you can't if you can't make your own and I run out, let me know and I'll make you some more. A, a, I mean I can make up about twenty in about an hour or an hour and a half, so it's not no big deal. So the promises that our Lord made. Our Lord's let's let's start with the sacred heart. Promises for, all right, promises for those who wear this. First, I preserve them from death by lightning. And that might, might not be a big thing for you, huh? but it used to be a big thing. It used to be a big thing. People, a lot of people, die, actually more people, a lot of people die from being struck by lightning more than you think. Second, it will protect them against the snares and malice of the devil. It's a protection against the devil. It's like, a, it's a sacramental. Almost all sacramentals help the man. But this was specifically designed to protect you from the snares and the malice of the devil. Three, it will I will deliver them from a sudden and unprovided death. In other words, you will not die suddenly without being in the state of grace. Okay, that's a big promise. Four, I will assist them in advance to advance easily in the path of virtue. Hey, I'm for anything that will help me, help me get holy faster and easier. And I, five, I will give them the grace of final perseverance. In other words, they will die inside the point. These are five pretty good promises. Again, if you're sewing impaired, you, know, you can take one and I will. Um, if I run out, let me know and I'll, I'll bring some in next time. Promises made to St. Mark of Mary for those who have devotion to the Sacred Heart. First, I will give them the graces necessary for their state in the life. So, mothers will get special graces, fathers will get special graces, students will get special graces, religious get special graces, for whatever your state in life is. I will establish peace in their homes. That's a big thing. Three, I will comfort them in all their afflictions. Four, I will be their secure refuge during life and above all, in death. I will be there to help you when you die. Five, I will bestow abundant blessings on everything that they undertake. Six, sinners will find in my heart the source of infinite ocean of mercy. Seven. I like this one. Lukewarm souls will become fervent. Lukewarm warm souls. In other words, you're not very holy, you will become holier. Lukewarm, yeah. Eight. Fervent souls 
wish I, could, I was at that level. But fervent souls will quickly mount to high perfection. So if you're lukewarm, you'll become fervent. If you're fervent, you'll go quickly um, to become perfect. Nine, I will bless every place where an image of my heart is exposed to knowledge. Ten, I will give priests the gift of touching the most hardened of hearts. Eleven, those who promote this devotion will have their names written in my heart. I like that one. Twelve, I, I mean, I can't be saying John put my head on his heart, so I'll, 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 writing his name in us sounds like the second best. Twelve, in the excess mercy of my heart, of his all-powerful love, those who receive Holy Communion on the first Fridays of nine consecutive months, I will grant them the grace of final perseverance. They will not die in my disgrace, nor without receiving the sacraments. And my heart shall be their final refuge in this last That's a lot. So those are the promises made for those who have devotion to the little gospel and the sacred heart. Now, what did he promise for those who have devotion to the holy face? Um, one, in heaven they shall shine with a brightness surpassing that of all others. Your place in heaven, you will be, you will get one of the higher places. Uh, this was a promise he made to St. Gertrude, and again he repeated it to Sister Mary of St. Peter. Two, they will always be with Christ, they will always be with Christ on earth and in heaven. Um, St. Mactilda asked our Lord that those who celebrate the memory of his face should never be deprived of his company. And he said, they will never be separated from you. In other words, he will be your personal friend and he will be with you throughout your whole life. Um, three, they will receive anything they ask for from God. It's, our Lord said, by my holy face, you will work miracles. And again, he told to Sister, uh, as in, in a kingdom, you procure what you ask for with a coin marked with the prince's uh, face. So in the kingdom of heaven, you will obtain all you desire by the precious coin of my holy humanity, which is my holy countenance, my holy face. Four, God will consider their actions like that of Veronica. All those who honor my face in the spirit of reparation will, by so doing, will perform the office of the pious Veronica. Five, all souls will come to resemble that of Christ and have the beauty of it, the same beauty that they had at the time of their baptism. Our Lord said, according to the care you take in honoring my face and making reparation, disfigured by blasphemy, so will I take care of yours, which is disfigured by sin. I will imprint therein my image and render it as beautiful as it was of the baptismal font. Five. Um, so I got the pages mixed up. No idea. Yes, it was this one. Um, all right, six. Those who defend our Lord by words, prayers, and writing, especially priests. Our Lord said, Our Lord has promised me for all those who defend his cause in this work of reparation, especially priests, by words, prayers, or writing. He will defend them before his father when they appear before him after death. He will purify their souls by wiping out all blots of sin and restoring them to their primitive beauty. Seven, you will convert sinners by my holy face. <clears throat> by my holy face you will obtain the conversion of many sinners. He said this to Sister Mary of St. Peter and to Sister Mother Farina he said, Offer my holy face without ceasing to the eternal Father. With this offering, you will obtain salvation and sanctification of many souls. And when you offer it through my priests, they will work miracles. Again, that working miracles thing. That's both in 
8, whenever you offer the holy face to God the Father, Christ himself will plead your cause. Every time you offer my holy face to my Father, my mouth shall be open to plead for you. So whenever you want something, you offer it through his holy face. It is our Lord then who will ask his Father for it. You think his Father's going to refuse him? That's why you'll work miracles. Nine, his heart is a proof of his love. His face shows the grief of sins of men. I have given my heart as a sensible proof of my great love for men, and I give my face as a representative, a sensible object of my grief for the sins of mankind. Uh -huh. uh, having, having um, the holy face. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> when did I talk of a second? We're not being selfish. We've all been wise. <laughs> Ten. Contemplating his face consoles him. Whoever contemplates me consoles me, he said. Eleven, contemplate my face and you will enter into my heart's abyss of sorrow. And twelve, the last, when we gaze on the face of Christ, we pour out our love in his, he pours out his love in our hearts. Every time that anyone gazes on my face, I will pour out love into their hearts. Okay, so you can see that any and all of these devotions connected together will have the, pretty much the seven of law will give you the following. It will make you holy. If nothing else, that's worth having devotion. It will make you holy. It will, it will give you, help you save souls of not your own, just your own soul, which is primary, but also the souls of other people that you love and other people in the world. It will, um, it may, will make you powerful in your requests when you pray, whatever you're praying for. And at the hour of death, Christ will be with you and he will help purify you so that you can appear before his Father. Yes. I believe it. Can I get yes. those? <laughs> Are you so prepared? I think you could make one of these yourself. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's sacramental. You're not supposed to throw it. <laughs> All right, so anyway, any other questions? Okay, I have some things here on the Holy Face that you can have them if you want. Um, and for those of you who are staying prepared here, this is the chaplet of the Holy Face, and again, they're, they're easy to come. This is another chaplet, there's more than one. Um, and I can't give you these crosses because I actually want to see if I can make it. Um, but any, you can see what they look like. This is this is the Defender Cross. Um, this is not. This is the Medal of Veronica. This is one of the, the Medal of Holy Face of Veronica. This is Medal of Holy Face of Mother Thing. So anyway, uh, again on the website I have. You can download. The paper to print off inside here, and you can download the, the directions to make these, and you can also, I also put up a video on how to how to set them. And you can download the covers. You print the cover off on computer printer paper that you can buy at Joann's. Each one makes 10, uh, and then you just, if they're real easy, just sew them together and put the stuff, the paper inside. The palm cross, you most people have some palm cross from other years. It can be any, and you only need a piece about that big. So one piece of palm can go make hundreds of these. All right, so let's say prayers and...